Hey, what's up people? Let's move on with the atomic structure in chemistry. And we were discussing about cathode ray discharge tubes or cathode ray experiment. So what actually was happening in the cathode ray experiment was that there is a small box like this, right? And on the one end we were attaching a cathode and the, uh, we were in the one end we were attaching an electrode, a negative electrode and one end we were attaching a positive electrode. What is happening here was like we have this uh, let's say this is the anode and then uh, we had a cathode similar cathode in this the difference between these two electrodes was the first one was perforated and the second one was not perforated means that it has holes in it so what was happening here that if we connected this with very high voltage right if we connected this in a very high voltage right like this, I'm connecting it to around four batteries, uh, and this is what was happening here, right? So, and secondly, what we were doing is we are putting two uh, barrels here, such that the air was taken out. The air was taken out to create vacuum. Okay, so vacuum was created here. So now this was happening here so what we have here is that when vacuum was created uh, we can say that the all the gases were not taken out the vacuum pressure was kept so that the gases were at very low pressure right and thus and different gases uh, pressure can be easily adjusted by evacuation and thus we were using vacuum right now what is happening is that when we like if there is a switch here let's suppose that there is a switch here we have a switch here right and when we close down the switch current starts to flow in this current should have flown in this but we know that if the two electrodes are not joined together the electricity will not flow the circuit has to be open but in this experiment the electricity was flowing and what is happening here was that if this puff if behind this anode this thing is the anode here if behind this anode if we put let's suppose uh, a fluorescent kind of a sheet then this fluorescent sheet started to glow at certain regions let's suppose it started to glow here and here so what was happening here was actually that if I uh, if I draw a straight line from this anode to the cathode so the cathode here we have is here this one so this is the cathode here okay and if I draw straight lines from here to this cathode then that was actually happening according to them so these rays were passing from the cathode to the anode and these rays were easily visible on the fluorescent sheet right so the main results of the experiment were that uh, these rays started from the cathode and moved towards the anode that is it started from the negative because this is the negative here and this is the positive and this one is the positive here therefore it moved from the negative to the positive the rays with themselves were not visible but the behavior of these rays could easily be distinguished using a fluorescent sheet which would glow when they were hit by them and if you were are a 1900 kid or a 20th century kid then you would understand the fact because you must have seen a CFT television right in the CFT television also the same concept was applied for example like if we have a box here let's say we have the CF we have this box and the screen is here right so here we have the screen right what, is ha what would happen here is there would be a fluorescent sheet here like this and sir and certain rays were passed in such a way that this gave us the image like there used to be receptors here or oh, sorry targets here and these targets would go on and off as, uh, as the signal we needed so when these triggers were on and off they used to send cathode rays 
and when they used to hit on the receptors it started to glow at certain regions giving us different colors and this was so uh, like different that they gave us colors like this so that is the concept of CFT television or the television we used in the earlier days but that is the point of discussion here the point of discussion here is what is the uh, like characteristic of these cathode ray tubes when in further experimentation it was found out that these cathode ray tubes moved in straight lines in the absence of electrical and magnetic fields which is very important here to understand that there is a condition applied here the absence of electrical magnetic fields so we need to st also study that what would happen if there was a magnetic or an electric field so in the presence of the electrical magnetic field like for example if I apply let's say like this I apply a electric field here right so I am applying an electric field so the behavior of cathode rays was similar to that should that be expected from negatively charged particles so what was happening here if is that when they are moving in straight lines if an electric if uh, an electric field is switched on in the perpendicular direction then the cathode rays would move towards the positive electrode like that it would move towards the anode of the electric field so this suggested art that these are that these particles are uh, positive in are ele negative in nature right so this experiment was done way later than what was done with the cathode ray tube also scientists tried to perform the same experiment with different types of gases they first used hydrogen in it they used hydrogen they used helium they used a uh, they also use another types of uh, like noble gases like krypton and xenon and etc but in every type of gas in every type of gas the characteristic of the cathode did not change right so uh, it was said that the cathode rays do not dip the, cat the particle nature of the cathode ray do not depend upon the gas present in the cathode ray tube and also the materials of the electrodes were changed the it was changed to zinc to copper from carbon etc but still the characteristics of the cathode ray do not change therefore it was constitute it was like concluded that these cathode rays are made up of negatively charged particles and these negatively charged particles were called as electrons it was also proved that these electrons are those ele these electrons also flow through the electric circuit and thus form the electricity but it has to be noticed that this was also proved that the electrons flowing in the cathode ray tube were the not the same electrons that were passing through the electricity current which is a different topic in physics now this experiment was first performed was first successfully performed by a British physicist named J.J. Thomson in 1897 so we have in 1897 we have a British physicist called J.J. Thomson performing this experiment to this success and thus using this he uh, made some calculative approaches these calculative approaches included finding the charge to mass ratio of this. So what would what uh, was happening in this? Thompson argued that the amount of deviation of the particles from the path in the presence of electric or magnetic field depends on a various number of points. And these points or these postulates included the magnitude of the negative charge on the particle. That is, if we have the similar kind of a thing. And we have these cathode rays passing through these. Then we know that these have electrons in it now. Right. So what is happening here is that. Uh, okay. So we have electrons here. Right. We also have electrons in here. Right. So he said that the magnitude of the negative charge on the particle will decide the deviation when an electric or magnetic field is applied. He also postulated that the greater the magnitude of the charge of the particle, the greater the interaction between the electric or magnetic field and thus greater is the deflection, which is quite easy to understand because more will be the charge, more it will be attracted towards the positive electrode and thus it will move by that direction. He also said that the deviation or the deflection will be also dependent upon the mass of the particle 
if the mass of the particle, the lighter the particle gets the deflection. This because it is very because if you consider it in terms of momentum, right? If the mass is high, if the mass of the particle is very high, it will be very difficult to change its direction or speed. So if we consider the point of direction, because in deflection we consider in direction, it will be very difficult us to change the direction of the motion. Therefore, it was rightly postulated that lighter the particle, the greater will be the deflection. And the third point where was the strength of the electrical magnetic field, which is very obvious because if the electric field strength is increased, more number of electrons will be attracted towards the positive electrode because they will be more attractive power of the electrode. Therefore, these three points, the charge, the mass, and the strength of the electrical magnetic field depended upon the cathode experiment. Thus, what he did was he applied an electric field on both sides of the cathode ray. So he applied an electric field in this direction here, in perpendicular to the propagation of this, like this. He applied electric field, and he does the uh, saw the deviation of the angle of deviation. Using this angle of deviation by accurate measurements, these measurements are just out of a context, uh, out of our understanding concept. So what he found out using this magnetic field is the E by M ratio or the charge by mass ratio. So what actually he found out was the charge by mass ratio, right? That is, it is E by M. Uh, okay. E by M ratio and that he found out to be using certain constant of 1.758820 into 10 to the power 11 coulombs per kg where you should understand the coulombs is the SI unit for charge and kg is the SI unit for mass. So this is the charge by mass ratio of our electron or our cathode ray particle. Thus, electron came as a new concept using this cathode ray experiment and it was easily proved that this electron is a constituent of the gas atoms and this uh, electron has a charge by mass ratio of 1.7 in 1.758820 to 10 to the power 11 coulombs per kg.